I've gone beyond 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Glonzo Mutula Jr. Thank you. Th thank you, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity. I, support, I rise to support this motion to censure these two cabinet secretaries, and I hope I will not repeat what uh, Professor Kendiki has ably represented. To the extent, Madam Speaker, that it's unfortunate that the two cabinet secretaries, and particularly Senator Keter, decided to address us from a press uh, conference or gallery somewhere. Uh, which compounds the contempt they have for the Senate. Madam Speaker, let me say that I miss the previous Senate. The previous Senate had teeth. The chairpersons had teeth. The chairpersons of committees were not ignored. The chairpersons of committees currently are ignored constantly by cabinet secretaries. I recall a cabinet secretary calling me a lobbyist in the middle of a committee meeting because the chairperson could not even tell the cabinet secretary, behave yourself. We must admit the sin of omission is partly by the committees of the Senate. And why do I say so? I say so because, and I'm going to put it on record, that the information I have is that a petroleum levy fund was supposed to cushion Kenyans from these fuel prices, the fluctuations. But the statement I raised in March was floated by the committee. This is what happens when we treat these cabinet secretaries with kid gloves. The person who you are summoning takes a chopper, goes to his county, and doesn't care. I can tell you for free, it is possible that these cabinet secretaries have put their legs on their seats and they're watching us on TV because we look like we're in a Mexican soap opera. Senator Kindiki is right. They know we can't do anything. And this started the day we were supposed to censure our cabinet secretary and we walked out of this chamber. We left because for that particular time, it was politically correct. Now it is affecting the people who elected you. And some of these cabinet secretaries think that by becoming so big and big heads, they're, go they're going to be elected governors. Some want to be presidents. Of which country? Which country are you talking about? It's unfortunate that... The persons who are supposed to check government are grieving with the people who are now who are supposed to be in government. The public is confused, members of the Senate. When the police barricaded Parliament Road and we were discussing a contentious matter here, we are joined and the speaker ordered them to leave. And they left. The speaker orders cabinet secretaries to come here, and they don't come. It is possible that some of them even call the office. I am aware that we, when we raise the questions about the judges, a very senior official even called the office to, to ask us why we were raising the question on the judges, the question that I raised on the appointment of judges. It's unfortunate. We must accept the blame. If the and if my good friend, Senator Kipchumba Murkomen, took the fight of 2015, where we drafted a law to change some of this framework in the Constitution, we would have made some progress. But politics has changed, and everybody is not talking about the right thing. We are talking about our political side, whichever side it is. I have been in this Senate when cabinet secretaries have said they are busy. I have been in this Senate when cabinet secretaries have sent CASs. I have been in this Senate when uh, uh, cabinet secretaries don't issue a response. Madam Speaker, I have not had or don't send anybody like this one. In fact, this was the worst. This one was the worst. And I don't know whether it's a committee of energy, but this was the worst. In, normally, these cabinet secretaries send people to snoop. 
They send people to take photographs. They send all sorts of manner of people. In this one, there was nobody. But what is even worse, Madam Speaker, is that other cabinet secretaries even bother to respond in writing. Even little... You know, the cabinet secretary finance gives us problems when we ask about the cash register. But occasionally, he sends us a, a paper that doesn't make sense. A small little paper here and there, you know, keeps us busy reading paper that doesn't make sense and doesn't add value. But he keeps us busy. These two cabinet secretaries did not even bother to draft a response. That's why this censure is important. So that it goes on record that these cabinet secretaries are not fit to hold public office. If it comes to a time when they are supposed to hold public office, we must put this in record. It must be that when there is contempt of parliament, it must be contempt of the people of Kenya. It is contempt against the people of Makweni. It is contempt against the people of Farakanithi. But let, let, let's ask the question, who is going to tell the king is naked? Who? Who is going to tell the king he is naked? It's unfortunate. These slogans that are all over the place have confused people. Somebody said, a famous person said, the box stops at my desk. Thank you for reminding me. This bug stops at the desk of the President of the Republic of Kenya. If your employee behaves like this, you deal with them. And therefore, we are calling upon the President to respond to the people of Kenya because his cabinet secretaries have failed in their duties. And strictly speaking, the people who took oath Two people at Kasarani to protect this constitution and protect the people of Kenya. One was the president. The second one was a deputy. As they say in Galatians 4.4, 4, in the fullness of time, they shall answer to that oath of office. To the people of Kenya. And we must put it on record. Because this is where we must say these things. I was in this parliament when you voted to increase debt. I was in this parliament when we have done many more things that have harmed Kenyans. Trust me, the debt question is the precursor of these things. And Senator Orengo is right and Senator Wetangula that how can you have a monopoly which is bankrupt? How can you have a monopoly that is overcharging Kenyans? How can we have a monopoly that doesn't allow us to use alternative sources of energy because we cannot afford electricity? Because they will tax those sources. Somebody sent me a list of the taxes we are paying for fuel. It's, it's ridiculous. This must be the only country where we are paying such. Uganda gets its fuel through our pipeline, which costs 52 billion shillings, and their fuel is cheaper. Who is going to speak for Kenyans when everybody is silent? When everybody is singing, we are all singing like we're in a choir. Kenyans are wondering, who is going to help them? Sanction is not enough. Our committees must do better. You must do better. Because we count on you to put these cabinet secretaries to task. They don't fear you. And there must be a reason. It's possible they call you or they will sap you, or something. Dear chairpersons, we are calling upon you to help this house regain its lost glory. That is the only way we will earn our respect that we used to earn when we... Is there a point of order from Senator Jeriot? Although he has finished his time, and I did want him to come back. Just a question that you need to guard this house, Madam Speaker. Apologies to my colleague. Uh, Senator Mutula didn't intend to interrupt uh, his very beautiful soliloquy that he was presenting before the House. 
But you see, Madam Speaker, these thoughts that you are sharing are for the committee to, work, uh, to action. That's what we agreed yesterday. I can't see the committee chair. I can't see the uh, committee vice chair. I can't see the majority leader. I can't see the deputy majority leader. I can't see the whips. Madam Speaker, is it in order? Which members? Can... No, 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 no. We, want the, we expect the leadership of the committee to be here. I'm sure Senator Mutula would wish to later on question the chair and say, I gave you points to question the minister. Did you do it? Uh, Honorable Senat Senator, I had seen Petrolina. You had also a point of order? Thank you, Madam Speaker. I just wanted to inform Senator Cheriot that the members are here. We are fully taking notes. In addition, we do not have a vice chair yet. Our vice chair was Senator Prengay. But the members are here. I think the whole membership is here. Senator, Senator Maina Ephraim, the chair, has worked out shortly and he informed the members. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Lake. Did you, did you, are you on a point of order? Yes, Senator. I, I think there's a bit of, um, I don't know if the members are in order to insinuate that the, the committee is not doing its job when even the committee of the whole house was snubbed. So is it that the, 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 the ministers called the house as well? Because it's, it's not fair to say that they, they were called when even the, the, how, the, the, the committee of the whole is not, uh, was not honored at all. But that having been said, Madam Speaker, we are here as the committee members and we attest to the fact that we've done our very best and the fact that the committee of the whole was snubbed should tell you that it's nothing to do with the committee really. Uh, thank you, Senator. Senator Langat, you still have a point of order? Say something. Madam Speaker, I just want to say that I'm also surprised that the majority leader, the chairman of the Energy Committee, surely are not here at this particular moment when we are discussing a crisis facing our country. Even if I am a member, those particular two people are so uh, important at Honourable this particular Senators, crucial moment. Honorable Senators, I think the point has been made, yeah. and the members of the committee have responded. I do not expect, even when a chair of a committee is in Dubai or is in the U.S., that the committee will not function. Already the members of the committee have said they are here and they are taking notice, notes. When we rule that they come back, we will expect them to come back, and the chair has arrived Thank you, Chair. Senator 